Greetings, Minecrafters! Non-Sanity here, and welcome to Episode 8 of All the Mod 6. Uh, today I want to get into Batania. We're going to need some stuff from there. I also want to do a little bit of the Power Mod, to sort of ramp up on stuff in there. And I want to introduce you to my friend Bob. But first we have to make him. Let's get started! Yes, I want to introduce you to my friend Bob. And he is a turtle. So we're going to hear computer craft. It helps if I type a few more letters just to... There we go. Computer craft is a programming mod using the language of Lua. Making a turtle isn't hard. It does require one ingot of all the modium. We got plenty of that. And I also want to give him a diamond pickaxe, because I want him to be able to break blocks. So what we do is we craft him with the pickaxe, and there he is. He's a mining turtle. Now, with mining turtles, or actually any turtles, let's put him down here. See, there he's got his pick. This is his front. This is his butt. And there's his pick. First thing you do with a computer craft... Uh, Turtle, label, set, and give him a name. This guy's name is Bob3. I have lost two Bobs. I just lost Bob2 when I was about to record. No idea what happened to him. Probably the wither got to him, but I don't even know how that was possible. Probably some sort of glitch. Don't know. But uh, uh, the other thing I'm going to need to do, now that he's got a name, I can break him. Uh, you, if you can break them when they don't have a name, but they will lose their knowledge of who and what they knew. I'm going to make a whole bunch of coal here. And get some coal blocks. This will be to feed them. So let's go into the wither room. And I'm going to put Bob right here. Oh! There's a piece of missing glass there. It's so hard to see with this glass. The texture just is horrible. Uh, so I don't really need that block. So let's put it there. So somehow the it didn't put the glass back in the right spot. It is, let's go inside here. Yeah, okay, it's still empty. Put that back. I really don't even need any of the holes on the front, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that one in, too. So he's sitting there with a block of glass directly in front of him. I'm going to make him build the wither for me, and then I'm going to have it be broken by a mob crusher, which I'll stick here. Oh, he's going to need a range upgrade. So right now his range is right there in front of him. Uh, let me hop out. Do I have an extra range? Any range will do. Yeah, I got tier four. That's more than enough. So if we put that in here. Okay, now it's a huge range. It extends outside the compact machine. But that's fine. As long as it covers the interior area. So, with this guy, we've, we've given him the name. Now let's give him some fuel. Notice this, ignore this little thing that's lighting up green when I move over. That's some sort of sort that one of the mods adds. Uh, it sort of gets in the way of some interfaces. There is a frame around this first space in the turtles. In, this is the turtles inventory here. We're going to put the coal in that space and say... Okay. There we go. Refuel... And we're going to say all. It just ate a bunch of the coal. Didn't burp, but it reached its limit. Now I'm going to stick it down here out of the way. Now we could go ahead and say edit star. We're going to call the program star. And I could start writing instructions in here like turtle forward. That will tell the turtle to move forward one block. And there's Turtles turn left, turtle turn right, turtle break, or turtle dig, turtle place. 
bunch of commands. Uh, instead of programming this live with you, I have already written a program. I will scroll through it and explain it. It's very, very simple. I designed this to be a program for non-programmers. So what I'm going to do here is bring a script in from the internet. Paste bin. Uh, get. And now I'm going to put in this code. Let's see if I can copy it here. C, capital C, capital A, capital U, lowercase n, capital P, capital K, 9, capital G. Hopefully this is correct. we got to give it a name now. We're going to call it star. All right, I got it. Let's edit star and see what it, the program looks like. That's it. All right, so what does this do? Well, this is going to build the weather. And let me get, actually, some materials. Nope. Had in the wrong mode. I want to get some soul sand. So that's enough for 16 withers. And that would be the head. So four soul sand, three wither skeleton skulls, you know, 16. So we're going to come into the turtle here. And I'm going to put these in this slot and these in this slot. So the soul sand has to be here. Wither skeleton skulls have to be here. You could put more in by filling in the row next to it, but put most of it, fill this first, and then any extras can be over here. Same with the weather skulls, put them in this slot, extras can be over here. Leave the first slot empty. Uh, it doesn't matter what's in the next three slots or the bottom three slots, and I just stick the extra coal down here, so it's there if I ever need to refuel the turtle, but it'll be a while before that happens. Oh, maybe that's what happened to Bob. He ran out of fuel. Hmm. That could be it. So what does this program do? Well, the first line here is to say we're going to be doing this over and over again. We're going to make lots of withers. But we want to stop when we run out of soul sand. So we want to have at least four soul sand. And when you set this up, make sure you have enough skulls for the soul sand. You can have more skulls, but don't have less than what you need for the amount of soul sand you put in, the, in this row. So what, I, what this says here is, while the turtle get item count in slot 5, they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is greater than 3, do. And what does it do? Everything after that until it gets to an end down here at the bottom. So everything between do and end, it's going to do over and over and over again until when it comes back up here and starts the top again, it sees that there's not 4. So this has to be greater than three, so four or more. If it's less than four, if it's only three or two or one or zero, it will stop. So you don't want to build a half a wither and then have to clean it out later. So it's nice to stop when we don't have enough materials. Uh, anything between the while and the do gets evaluated for true or false. So turtle, get item count in slot five, greater than three. You could just put while true do, and it'll run whatever's between the do and the end forever. But we're going to stop cleanly when we run out of materials. Uh, then it's just a whole bunch of commands to the turtle. I didn't do anything fancy here. I kept it extremely simple. So here we say turtle select one. This selects this first slot. It's already selected, but it doesn't hurt to select it again. And it digs. So what it's going to do is it's going to dig the block in front of it, which is that glass. Then it's going to move forward twice. Moving forward, we'll put it into where the glass is, and then once more, we'll put it inside the chamber. And that's going to move down one. It's going to be down right in front of this guy inside the chamber, right in the middle of where you would build the T-shape of the soul sand. Then it just has to place one below, turn to the side, place one to the side, turn around, place one on the other side, and then it has to move back up and place one below it. So that's what it does. Uh, it selects five, that's this slot here, so it selects the soul sand, places one down, turns left, places one in front of it, turns left twice, that turns it around, to place, place one on the other side, then it straightens back up again, 
moves up and places one down. At this point, it's placed all of the soul sand. Now it turns to the left, selects row nine, slot nine, which is down here, the Wither Skulls, places one to the left on one side, turns around, places one to the other side, turns right, which is now facing back out, moves forward. So that moving forward puts it where the glass is currently. It turns around, turns left twice, places the last skull. That is when the wither will be created. It turns around again, moves forward. Now it's outside the box, turns around and places glass from, goes to slot one and places the glass that it had picked up. Because when it, when it dig, when I use the dig command, it was in slot, selected slot one. So whatever it digs up went to slot one. So that's where the glass was. So we want to keep that slot free. So that's placing the glass and it's just now it has to wait for the wither to come into existence, power up, and then get killed by the mob crusher. In the meantime, it does a little bit of shuffling of sand and skulls. Since it just used four sand from this slot and three skulls from this slot, if there was more in these other slots, it's going to shuffle it all to the left. So what it does here is it selects slot six right here and transfers to five. So it'll try and put as much soul sand in this slot as it can into here. And then it goes to slot seven and tries to transfer it to six. And then it goes to eight and tries to transfer it to seven. So it's basically shuffling all these to the left. And then it does the same thing with the wither skulls. Just sort of shuffles them all to the left. As long as you put the bulk of it here, this is just a little bit of maintenance, just shuffling to keep these things full. And then it sleeps for 15 seconds to give it the wither time to grow up and die. And then that's the end. And it goes back to the beginning. If it still has materials, it does it again. So we're going to hit uh, control and you can see save is selected, hit return and then control arrow key exit. So he's gassed up. He's got his materials. Everything's in place. This thing is on and ready to run. I think we're set to start him. Star. There he goes. I've been having trouble with my audio tonight, so I cannot hear the game. But hopefully you can. There he is. He puts the glass back. And now in a moment, the wither will activate, and then the mob crusher here can kill it. There it went. And we have another star. Now he's sitting there counting that 15 seconds, and there he's done. He's building the next one. Very simple. Now, you may need to adjust that 15 second timer to be a little longer or a little shorter, depending on, you know, if for some reason your wither is a little slower or the method you have to kill him takes a little longer or it's more variable. Here, it could take as long as this drains. So maybe 15 seconds. Yeah, maybe I need to increase that 15 seconds. Let's, uh, Take that out of Bob. So now, with he's going to come. He's right down at the bottom of his program, waiting that 15 seconds. When that timer is over, he will look here and see that there's not four soul sand, and he will stop. And we'll see the little typing carrot. There it is. So it has just exited the program. So let's. I'm not really in a rush to kill these things. Let's double that timer. It'll just make me feel better. Because I think maybe. That might have been what happened. He went in too soon, Bob number two, and was killed by the wither. All right, star, and there he goes. All right, so he's done. We can leave him be, and hopefully Bob will survive. <laughs> Bob three. I had a lot of hamsters named Tribble when I was a little kid. Triple one, triple two, triple three. Sort of like that. It reminds me of that. All right, next. Uh, 
power mod. So I've got a project chest. Let's grab the parts. We're also going to have to craft a few. Let's go to uh, at power. What we need are these energizing rods because this mod is a energy production and transfer mod. I probably won't use the transfer mode, like this will transmit power to the player, wherever they are, uh, with the right upgrade. But I've got that from the Flux Networks mod. So really all, and I'm, I may build a generator, but for now I just need to be able to make its materials. It's got Energized Steel, Blazing Crystal, Niotic Crystal, Spirited Crystal, and Nitro Crystal. And I'd like to get those going. So to do that, we need the Energizing Orb, which I went ahead and made one already. Glass, and this dielectric rod and casing. Uh, the casing is made up of some of the rods, and the rods are made from paste and iron bars. And they either make this type or that type, but you can swap between them just by crafting them. This paste is coal or charcoal, clay, and blaze powder. And you get 16, so you can make a lot of that pretty quick for just a little bit of materials. I'm going to make uh, two stacks of these and convert one of them to the opposite direction. And then the center of these are these casings which need those and iron. I'm going to make... Uh, that's good enough for now. All right, with quartz, we also need to make these basic... Well, there's three different sizes of capacitors. This makes the basic uh, size. Let's make two stacks of them. You can craft these by themselves to break them down into two tiny capacitors. Or you can put them together to make larger capacitors, like that. So those are the three sizes. Basic, tiny, normal, and large. We're going to be using all of them. We're going to start with these tiny ones. And I'm going to make... Uh, did, did I run out of the vertical dielectric mods, rods already? Let's make like six of these. Actually, five is enough. Just make five. And we can go ahead and start doing things with these. If I put this down here and then plop these on this cable, uh, I can go ahead and do the first recipe straight out of the bat, which is one gold and one iron. Right click them on here and everything should activate and there they go. And if you look, there's some numbers in green and gray. That's the percentage complete. It takes 10,000 FE to make one of these, or two of these, energized steels. But once we've got a little bit of that, we can break these down and upgrade them. Actually, we could have upgraded them right away to the second tier which just takes a block of quartz and the medium-sized capacitors and one of the previous ones. So if you do this, two, three, four, five, there's that extra one I had. I'll just toss it away. So these will actually produce, send the power faster for the crafting. But now we've got some energized steel. We can go ahead and go one step higher and we make these hardened capacitors, which uses energized steel in the large capacitor. And I need 10. There we go. And now we can upgrade these to the next tier. So now these I'll put back up on the wall. because we're going to do the next material, which is blazing crystal. This requires a blaze rod. So let's get some blaze rods. Click one on there. You can see it's going up. Now, if we if I kept the original uh, rod, uh, 
with these uh, energizing rods, that would have taken much longer. But this is running almost as fast as the first one did, but we did raise them up two levels. So as we get this stuff, we can now do it again. We can upgrade these rods. So if we use these, we need blazing capacitors. Again, large capacitor with the new blazing crystals. Again, I want 10 of them. And upgrade, there you go. And the best way to do this is to just upgrade as you go. What, was, what am I missing? Oh, block of quartz. No, just regular quartz. There we go. There's the last one. So, we're just going to keep moving up the chain here. The next one is Nyadic Crystal, which takes a, one diamond. So, get a diamond. Plug that in there. You can see, because we're keeping pace with upgrading these, these more expensive recipes, this now takes 300,000 RF, doesn't take that much more time. Which is by design, I'm sure, in the mod. So we're going to need to make a bunch of these, and then we can, once again, <laughs> upgrade... I one, I took out that wall once accidentally doing that. i got to be careful. So we're going to upgrade these one more time to the Niatic capacitors. It's following the same pattern. Ten of those. Oh, I'm running out of Niatic. At each step, make four extras, because if you can take any of these materials, the Energized Steel, Blazing Crystal, the Niatic, and make a, a seed for it. So it just takes four. Make the seed... And then you can grow that to make the essence, which you can use to make more crystals. And I did that. Because that takes a while to cook. So I can make, you know, plenty of these things. There's two stacks. <laughs> okay, there's ten. And upgrade. Now, I am going to automate this and show you that, but I wanted to show you the manual stuff first. Because, you know, I'm not showing crafting all of the parts I need to upgrade these five rods, because that's four and four and four, you know, it's 20 that you need to make. So I'd have to run that 20 diamonds through this to upgrade all five of those. That'll take a little bit of time, but I want to keep things moving along. Lots to do. Uh, next is the uh, emeralds. So I'll get some emeralds here. Get two. Pop that in there. How long does it take? It's going a little bit slower than the other ones, maybe. It, but it takes a million FE. So upgrading these five is not quite keeping up with the higher costs for these materials. And again, uh, Go ahead and make a seed so you can make plenty of this stuff. And we're done almost. There we go. And now the final tier. Let's go ahead and upgrade these using the spirited capacitors. Same pattern. Ten of those. No big surprises in any of this. But there is one limitation on the final tier. In that, while you can make the seed, you can't grow it in the farm that I've got. So, final seed is nitro. And the recipe for that is another star, two blocks of redstone, a block of that blazing crystal we are making, and that gets you 16 of the crystals. So while it's expensive, you do get more. So let's get uh, two blocks of redstone. Uh, the blazing crystal right here. And another star. Do 
the, the order doesn't matter, thankfully. But this is going to take quite a bit of time. You see it's much slower. So while that's cooking, let's set up some automation so we can set a bunch of recipes going and walk away. So we're going to put down an item. Uh, so we're going to use integrated dynamics because it works great for this sort of thing. I'm going to put a this blue extractor there. An inventory connector there, one there. I made another one of these crafting interfaces. I made a job terminal, which I'll put on top, and a storage terminal, which I'll put here. And now I need my programmer. And we're going to make a recipe. We'll just start at the beginning, because it's a very good place to start. So the iron and gold to make two energized steel. There it is. Then we'll make the blazing crystal, which is one nether, uh, one blaze rod for one crystal. Niotic, which is one diamond for one niotic crystal. Spirited, one emerald for one spirited crystal. And nitro, which is the one we're currently doing. And I'm going to switch to an empty hand before I open these things. I found I've crashed a few times. And I usually crash when I clicked on one of these things with another piece from that mod. I'm not sure what's going on there. If I hold down shift, you can see what these patterns create. And now if I look in the storage monitor here and go to the item storage, I can see that it can craft all those. Except that it doesn't have the parts necessary right now. And then over here, to make it extract, I wanted to just extract anything. So we're going to go to Boolean, which is just means true or false. Make a true card. And import all items, we put true. Now you notice it's not taking those parts out. And that's because this mod was written so that the ingredients that you put in are not available to be extracted by hoppers or cables or pipes or whatever. Only the final product is. And we're close to the final product. So it's going to extract it and put it in this chest. Any raw materials for these craftings has to also be in this. Oh, I just ruined it. I right-clicked it. And now it's going to start over. Oi! So sorry. Don't do that. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get... Uh, Two more nether stars. Four more of these. Redstone blocks and two of these. So that's enough to make two more of the blazing, of the, the nitro crystals. So you can see uh, the ingredients in there. And again, you can uh, show just the what the stuff that's in the crate or just the stuff that you can craft. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say make two batches. It's not how many you come out with, like refined storage does. Here it's how many batches do you want. So it's going to show you how many it's going to actually make over here. And craft. Now if we look on the top now, we can see that's the crafting batch. Status recipe not allowed. That's because the, the machine is currently active, doing something else. It says how long it's been running, and size 1. Not sure what that is. Oh. It went ahead and pushed the stuff in there. Oops. <laughs> Got to click with an empty hand. All right. I took out... Where's the other blaze... All right, well, don't start a job when it's running, working on a job, or when it's got something in there, because it looked like it pushed some of what it needed to in there. It didn't push everything. These are both still in there, so I'm not sure what's up with that. But now it's now it thinks this is the job that it started, which is fine. When it's done, it won't start a new one until the output gets back into a chest that it can see that it's con that this is connected to, via. A, uh, 
item interface. But yeah, we can put in diamonds, emeralds, gold, iron, and tell it to craft any of these and blaze rods. Now, why did I want this? Because there are some recipes for this guy. Uh, you can take your refined storage. That's the fluid grid. Crafting grid. Here it is. This thing here. Pop it in here, and for 420,000 FE, it becomes a creative wireless crafting grid. Now, I, it would be nice if that meant it would work anywhere. But all it does is make it so that it doesn't need power. You see, it's got a power meter on the bottom, and this one doesn't. Uh, the only way to make this vibranium, all the modium alloy ingot, is in here. Uh, haven't needed that yet. And then uh, some of the other uh, alloys with those materials can be made in here. Uh, you can make dry ice with a couple of blue ice, a uh, block of gold instead of ingots, and ender core. Don't need that, but they can make that that way. So if you're using applied energistics, you can put your dense energy cell in here and get a creative energy cell, which give you all the energy for AE2 that you need. Uh, or, since we're using refined storage, you put a refined storage in here, and it will turn it into creative version that doesn't require power. And that'll be very handy. It does require 420 million FE. It takes a while. You can also make a charged snowball. I think that turns creepers into charged creepers when you throw it at them, which could be useful if you need charged creeper drops. Uh, but I went ahead and made that... Let's see. Refined storage. This guy, creative controller. I hadn't put it in place. So I was waiting for you. Let's see, I have elevators right here. So I break that and place with this one. Do I need to reset this? No, it still remembers. Toss that away. And so now my AE system, both the wireless remote and the system itself, no longer need power. That's worth doing it, doing power mod, if for no other reason. Because now I can start making the, uh, let's see, uh, what are they called? Add a refined network receiver and network transmitter. Oh, need some more of these machine casings. And I'd want to make a wireless transmitter. And there's also the card thing. Where is it? Network card. Okay, so let's do these. So I'm going to go down here. And I guess I'll just start on the floor. This will be a transmitter. I'll put the transmitter there. And now I'm going to go into this new compact machine. Now, a commenter asked about the compact machine recipes. The uh, com packed machine. Uh, there hasn't been an update to the pack that makes these field projectors necessary, which is the normal way to craft these things for the compact crafting or compact machines. Uh, I'm making the maximum tier compact machines. All you do is make the compact machine walls here. Don't do that one. Do this one. Block of iron, redstone, and a crafting table. You get 16 of these. That's enough to make two of the max size with a block of emerald in the middle. And that's it. They're very simple. Let's go in here. And I'm going to place down this guy. And I'm going to whack it, uh, crouch whack it. Crouch whack it. It is the network card, right? Oh yeah, it says right there. Linked to this location in the compact machines compact world. Now we go out of here. And we're going to go down to that transmitter I set down, right click it to open it up, and put this card that we've, that's, it's targeted to that receiver, drop it in there. So now if we look, you can see there it is. It's in the system. Normally these would each require 
power. And because that's going interdimensionally, that would require a good bit more power. It says 64 FE a tick. I don't know if they're actually using that power. Well, maybe it doesn't care about range anymore. Maybe not in this pack. Normally, how far away they are really increases the power draw and the going interdimensionally was even more costly. But this shouldn't actually be using any power. I should be able to, uh, well, these guys over here still require it, so I'll put it back. Yeah, these mechanism machines still require power. But this should not require power anymore. That should stay completely full, no matter how I use it. So now if we go back into this, and I place... Oh, so I need, a, I need a cable. Of course, it did not bring one with me. Ah, uh, this. Give me one piece of cable. So place that on there. So now, aha! With those three blocks in here and linked up, I can use my wireless crafting remote from inside the compact machine. That's worth doing. Where are we, though? This is going to be Batania. And in, the order, in order to get things going quickly, we're just going to start right in on automating it. Uh, this is the Petal Apothecary. Your basic first step in Batania. All it needs is some cobble and one petal from one of those mystical plants. Uh, yeah, mystical. And I'm going to do some automation on it. Now this requires water in it, and I hate having to fill that water back up. So the first thing I'm going to do, actually I need to pop down here and then go back up. break that. I need to place this facing up. Oh, no. See, they sort of they really need you to be directly above them. That is a item user from Cyclic. It is going to be the one filling this back up. And it needs power, so I've got a point there. And I've got a second one that I'm going to place like that facing down. So what do these do? Well, I've got a bucket here. If I put a bucket in this one, I'm going to set it to 40, always on, and this one to 40, always on. It's now clicking that bucket in the air. If I put a sink under it, you can see it's filling the bucket, and then it's clicking it again to um, empty it. Uh, I'm going to take it out when it's full. There we go. That's what you want to do with the pipes. You want to take it out when it's full. All right. Let's do that. Again, I'm going to use some integrator dynamics. We want to... We're going to extract on the back here. And I want to create a card for full buckets. We want to extract full buckets. So that was what we we're saying. We're going to extract full full water buckets. And they're going to go into that guy by giving it that item thing. That's the only place it can go. So I put this back in here. Whoop, it got pulled out, stuck in there. And now you can see it's now clicking. <laughs> if we go up here, you can see it's filling up and emptying repeatedly uh, to pick off. See? So when it's full, I'm going to pull it out. All right. And again, that's what we want to do. I want to pull it out when it's full. Now, because I'm going to fill that grass in, and the only side of that user I can get at is the bottom here, I'm going to keep it white. So that can take input and output, but it doesn't do anything by itself. This one is extracting out of this guy, and then the only place it can go is in there. And then I'm going to use a retriever, the orange type, which is going to 
pull something out of connected inventories, and that's the only connected inventory, and put it in here. And we wanted to put empty buckets. So empty bucket card. So we go here and say put empty. Uh oh, it crashed. All right, back from the crash. This has been a cursed episode. Oh, I think I did click it with a piece. So yeah, there's something going on there. All right, export item, empty buckets, or import. So it's going to pull it from there and put it in here. So this arrangement of a blue and an orange and a white lets me have just one connection to that. So now if I put in an empty bucket here, it fills up, gets pulled out, and now it's not going to do anything because there's already water up there. But as soon as I use that water, it will hit it with this bucket, it'll be empty, it'll get extracted out, put in this guy, get filled up, get extracted out, and put in that guy. So we now have automatic water refilling on the Petal Apothecary. Very nice. But I'd like to automate it even more. That's why I've got more pieces. So let's see if I remember how to do all this setup. Uh, we're going to have a connection here with a white connector there. We're going to use another crafting interface, but uh, it's going to be to this side. Because the stuff that you put in the Petal Apothecary has to be dropped into it. And I found that I sort of need to have a staging inventory for this crafting interface. Because when you tell it to put multiple different things in as part of a recipe, and your target destination only can hold one item, it's going to get stuck. This is a precise dropper. I can take everything down to the barest minimum. That's interesting, the zero went off the end. Uh, it does need some power, so let's put that on top. Okay, it's got power, uh, it does not require redstone, and that is where it's going to drop stuff. And I've set the, the count to 1, it says drop things one at a time. The offset is 0, so it's going to do it right there, and delay, it's just going to drop them all pretty quickly. But it only has one slot. So if this thing is trying to put, you know, two brown petals, a gray petal, a red petal, and a wheat seed into that one slot, only one's going to go in, and then it's going to get stuck. So we send it to this first, and then we can connect it up like so, and make a true card. Say import all items. So. The crafter is going to dump everything in here, and it's all going to get sent here one at a time, where it's going to spit them out, and they're just going to come out and drop straight down into this guy. Now, I'm going to put a world import. This is another item. It does require having been to the end, because these crystallized chorus chunks requires taking a popped chorus fruit and uh, squeezing it in a mechanical squeezer. And you get these chunks, and then you can take the liquid chorus that it outputs and dry it in a basin for more of these shards in block form. Uh, the regular crystallized mineral and a diamond gets you these logic directors with a regular item importer gets you the world item importer. I'll place that there. That's going to suck up the output from the crafting. And then one of these storage terminals so that we can set up the crafts. So let's make a crafting recipe. We're going to make an endo flame. Well, actually, no, first we have the pure daisy, which is white petal, white petal, white petal, white petal, and then you drop seeds. Up a uh, recipe. Now, unfortunately, when you copy the recipe in, it doesn't do a very good job. <laughs> it puts the petal apothecary in there, and it doesn't put the seeds. So I'm going to get a little bit of each of these petals and some seeds in my inventory so we can craft these recipes by hand. 
this is one, two, three, four. Uh, we can also do a, a left click with four in our hand to actually make it four like that, and then a seed. And that gets you, oh, that's true. We, I should have copied this in first and take him out. If I, there we go, four. And one seed gets you a pure daisy. Get that recipe. And then we'll do the endo flame. Since we're doing this, we're going to be using that to make the mana. Two brown, a red, and a light gray. Again, it doesn't do a very good job, but it does put the ender flame there since I don't have it yet. Two brown, light gray, red, and a seed. Make the card. And we'll stick them here in this guy. And because the item interface is down here, this is where the ingredients need to be. And it can see them all. It can see the crafting. Make us two pure daisies. Craft. what I forget? Oh. <laughs> I think I know what happened. Oh, no. Import all items. Oh, I... Oops. It crashed again. And I'm back. This episode has been an exercise in frustration management. It's been seven hours since I started trying to record this. Oi! Integrated Dynamics has been very crashy tonight. Alright, what I did wrong here was I had this backwards. This is an... It extracts and it takes somewhere to go. This is where you tell it to put it out. There. And my magnet is on. <laughs> Let's put all these, these back in there. Where'd the other seed go? Got picked up. Ah, yeah. We need to make one more change. Okay. Yeah. Up oh, there. It was. Hear the water doing its thing. Uh, this thing is going to be picking up everything. We don't want it to pick up the stuff this thing drops. Uh, so we're going to make a list. And I wonder uh, if I didn't have the the stuff, like here I can say add pure daisy to the list. What if I wanted to add endo flame? And I haven't made any yet. Can I? I can. That's excellent. Oh, but I don't have any more cards. Here are my cards. So, list, pure daisy, end of flame, make a list, go into here and say pick up item entities, these two. All right. I've got two pure daisies. Let's make uh, three end of flames. Oh, I didn't hit go. Craft. Well, that wasn't right. Okay, I'm not sure where I cut there. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too abrupt a cut, but I uh, had to make a slight change. Uh, the recipe card here for the end of flame. Uh, before when I made it, let's go ahead and just do it again here. Recipe, end of flame, copy it down. Well, I need to get the uh, three colors of pistol petals here. Recipe, copy it down. It doesn't do a very good job, but it does put this part over here. So now let's empty everything else out. And I'm going to right click two separate petals. I think that may be necessary. At least now it's working properly. And then a seed. And then that is now the recipe. Before I had the two petals in one slot. 
may behave differently with that. So let's try it now. Let's make three go. Oh, again, I jumped out before it was craft. There it goes. And now we've got six, because I already did this once. <laughs> and it's filled the water back up. Uh, it seems to spray them all over the place, but they really are just dropping straight down. And they may sit there for a bit until the thing gets a chance to refill the water. Uh, but then it will eventually work. The order doesn't matter too much. The seeds can be dropped at any time. They're used last, but... Uh, yeah, this now works. So we can make a bunch of daisies and let's see, we've got two here. Let's make six more. Um, uh, white petals, no problem. We have mystical flower essence from a plant. So I can make a stack of the flowers, which gives me two stacks of the petals. <laughs> So much faster than running out and getting them. Six and go. All right. Yeah, see, it put out too many petals. So I think I need to fix that recipe as well. I was waiting to see if that was the case. So, pure daisy. Go, uh, go to recipe. Import the pure daisy to get the output. Well, I had the output, so I didn't need to. And then four separate white petals and a seed. Update the recipe. All right, put those back in there. Let's give it another try. Oh, I installed a another one of these crafting job terminals here so I can cancel anything that goes wrong. But now, hopefully, it won't go wrong. It's spectacular, but it is actually far more controlled than it looks. And there we now have eight pure daisies. Good. Let's go downstairs. I have made this little platform under the ground here. I think I can just reach those back grass spots. I can definitely reach these. I like this catwalk from uh, Engineer's uh, Decor. Sort of fun. All right. And now if we come up here and open this up, I can see the edge of those two. I went ahead and made an infinity wand, which despite having the infinity of the name is not expensive, just a star and some sticks. And with my dank, it's got this ebony logs and it's got stone. So I can right click and that fills up the whole space. You can see it's fills up the entire space with those materials. And you can see the white sparkles. That means the pure daisies are doing their work. And when they're done, I can uh, uh, or excavate both of them with my Paxil here and get half a stack at a time of both living stone and living rock. Uh, living rock and living wood. Living stone? I always think it should be living stone. I may be presuming too much. Ooh, that was a bad joke. <laughs> living rock, living wood. So we get lots of that. And for the endoflames, oops. I'm going to start putting them over here along the wall. I think I've got more in here. Oh, I heard it. Living rock and living wood. I gotta toggle on my magnet to pick them up. And then I can just do it again. It's really nice that this wand works with the dank. 
So it pulls the stuff out of there. Very handy. So now I've got a half a stack of each of those, and shortly we'll have even more. So I'm going to lay these out. Let's see. Now this is going to be more than I need. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's way more than I need. <laughs> Six, six should be right. We can adjust if necessary. All right, so with the living rock and the living wood, I can make a few things. We can make, well, actually I already made them. But we'll look at the recipes here. Uh, living rock to make a mana pool and living wood with a petal and a blue ingot of gold to make mana spreaders. And I'm going to put the pool here and one there. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to put a block on top and then the spreaders. And get rid of the block. I guess I can turn my magnet back on now for a bit while we're doing this. Something else we need to use the living wood for is to make three of the living wood sticks and mix that with two petals of color choice. We'll just do this. That gets us the wand of the forest. And I'm going to crouch, right click that, and then that to make it aim down. See, there's the, the hole there. And you also aim down. So they're both aimed down at the pools. One thing is I put these after I put the flowers, and that's no good because if I hold down the wand and I look at the fl any of the flowers, you see there's a little red X next to the miniature mana spreader icon in the middle of the screen. But if I break one of these and place it back down again, and then do it again, now there's a little green mark. And you can see up in the screen there's a highlight around the mana spreader. When you place these plants, they find the nearest spreader and attach themselves to it. So what I'm actually going to do is break all these. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I place this one and look at it with a wand, it is connected to that spreader. If I place this one, it is connected to that spreader. Yep, and then if I place these two, they should be connected. So look at it from this side. Yeah, they connected to the closest one. So these should all click, connect to this spreader. And now I can... Oh, I broke too many. Those three connect to him. These three connect to him. Yeah, and then I can put down all these. Now this is too many for the spreader to handle right now. But we'll be able to upgrade the spreaders and then they'll be able to handle more. For now, we'll just have a little bit of overkill. I've got plenty of coal and everything else, so it's not going to be a big problem. So, time to set up another automation. Now there's lots of different ways to automate the feeding of these flowers. I've decided to go with full-on integrated dynamics in this case, because a lot of these have been very simple, just like pipe everything out and using this crafting system. This time we're actually going to do some cards. So you've gotten some experience. If you've never used integrated dynamics, you've seen a little bit of how it works. Now we're going to get down to some of its power. And for that, we're going to need a variable store. This thing holds these cards. So far, we've just been putting the cards in various devices, like putting a, this card in here, and it's just a plain up Boolean. We created that card, we put it in here, it's done. But now we're going to be doing some reading and writing of things, which makes everything a bit more complicated. And I ran out, I've got more.
No. It was just like that. That's why I ran out. I, was, I had a bit too much like that. Done with those. So what have I got here? I've got world item exporter. So like we made this world item importer, which sucks things into the system. Well, these exporters spit things out. I'm going to put one there. And I'm going to put one there. Each of these is going to be spitting out coal blocks to feed the nearby flowers. One for each side, one for each spreader. Uh, I'm going to have to have one item interface connected here to the back of this iron barrel. And that's where I'm going to stick the coal, which I should make up some coal blocks. I'll have to make more. Actually, I got lots of blaze rods. Let's make blaze meshes. They last even longer. I sure we'll keep some on us because we'll need that. I'm also going to put down this NBT extractor. Now this is from an add-on for Integrated Dynamics, yet another one, called Integrated NBT. You don't have to have it. I'm going to actually put it right here. It acts as a piece of pipe. Uh, you don't have to use this mod, but it's going to make it a much easier. And since this pack has it, let's use it. I also have Entity Reader. This reads Entities. Mobs or item drops can be seen by this guy. And then we have block reader, which reads status from the attached block, which is going to be these mana pools. So let's program this setup. Now the block readers, if we open it up, we can see that it's telling us a lot of information. What dimension this block is in, its X, Y, and Z coordinate in that dimension, its name, its NBT data, We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the biome it's in, the light level it's got, and whether or not there's something there. It's this NBT data that we're interested in. So I'm going to get that. NBT data is everything that a mod, everything that a block stores in, all the extra information, uh, like how much mana is in this pool. And what we're going to do I made the NBT extractor remote. It's basically just this block in uh, item form. And if I crouch right click, it's now connected to that block. So if I take this NBT and I stick it in there, here's all the data for the mana pool. You can see it says Botania mana pool is its ID. Uh, it has a, can hold 1 million mana. It currently has zero mana. Uh, it can spare and probably means it can give up mana to something. Its position, can it accept mana? Oh, spare, when you right click the pools, I bet with a wand, a crouch right click there. See that arrow changes? Oh, let's look back in here. Can spare one, can accept one. Swap it. Can spin up. That isn't it. Hmm. I sort of expected one of those two to change. I guess that isn't part of the NBT. All right, so that uh, lets us see all this stuff. What we want to know is how much mana is in the pool. So I'm going to click that and put a card in. And now this is... I can take that out. This has got a live output, this card, a live information on how much mana is in that pool. Do I have a display? Don't think I have another one. So let's make one real quick. This R handy. And I'm going to stick it just right here. It doesn't matter where on the network, anywhere on the network. And I'm going to put this in here and it's going to have an error. Variable with ID 209 could not be found within the current network. The variable of this one is 210, it says there, and it's extracting data from 209. That's this one over here. This is variable ID 209. Remember, this is all the NBT data for the pool, 
it's live, but it's all the MBT data. And this is just the mana pool. But it, it's looking for this card, and it can't see it because it's in my inventory. Haha, <laughs> you can't have it. Well, let's give it to it. Let's put it here in the variable store. Ah, now it can see it. And if I take one of these and I chuck one out, it'll get picked up by one of the flowers or my magnet. Let's uh, turn off the magnet. Do they like these? Ah, yep, there. That one has lit up. So it should be generating mana. And now it's being beamed down into the pool. And look, we have 160 mana in the pool. 320. So it's 160 each time. And when it gets to a million, the pool will be filled. We're going to start spitting these uh, blaze meshes out. But we want it to... Don't waste it if the pool is full or near full, because these things will probably still be all churning out power. We want to stop it a little bit before it's completely full. So we're going to use this information to check that. Now, we saw that it can hold up to a million. So let's stop it just before a million. Let's say 990,000. And we'll make a card with that number. So now this card is how much men is in the pool, and this is our 990,000. We want to have the variable be true as long as it's under this amount. We want to keep spitting stuff out when it's under this amount. So let's go down here and look for less than. So as long as the amount of mana in the pool is less than 990,000, this will be true. But we also don't want to keep spitting out these blaze meshes if there's one sitting on the ground. So let's learn about that. That's what this guy is over here. You can see it says entities empty. There's no entities in front of it. We're going to get this list of the entities in front of it, which is currently empty, but may have something in it. We want it to be empty. Oop, we want it to be empty before we spit out another blaze rod or blaze mesh. So we can say empty, and that's this little uh, symbol for an empty list. Is this list empty, true or false? So now we've got the amount of men in the pool and this 990 if it's less than that. This is true. If the list of entities is empty, then this is true. If we add these two together, so if this is true and this is true, then this will be true. And this means eject a blaze mesh. Now we only wanted to eject blaze mesh, nothing else. So let's make a blaze mesh. Uh, item card. There it is. And an empty item card. I'm going to come down here to this question mark. So if all these conditions are true, then eject a blaze mesh. Otherwise, eject nothing. And that is our final card. And that we put up here. Uh, Wait, this is place. Item entity, yes. Place item entity. So it's going to drop an item, and we want it to drop this. Well, it's it can't find any of these cards. We have to put them all in here. I'm putting these two down here because they're constants. Actually, this is a constant, too. Uh, now, you see it, it spit out way too many. We need to make an adjustment. Well, velocity, let's make that zero, so it drops it straight down. Item transfer rate just one at a time. That should be good. So now we can toss these in here, and it should only spit out one. There it is. And now it's it won't drop another one until the first one gets picked up. But as soon as it gets picked up, it'll drop another one. 
at some point here, all of the flowers there. They're all lit up. That one's just going to sit there. One more change we can do. Uh, I think in here... Lifespan ticks. This is a very interesting feature of this mod. Normally when you drop something, it lasts for five minutes. And at 20 ticks... That would be, you know, 300. That's five minutes. But we can change this. There. Now when it drops an item here, it's not going to despawn anytime soon. It'll just sit there, preventing it from dropping a new one. So you won't be wasting any to despawning using this setup. And when this gets full, it'll stop ejecting anymore. Pretty slick. All right, all we have to do is do it again for this side, and uh, we're done. Okay, with the other side duplicating exactly what I did on the first, uh, this setup is ready. It will now run through the fuel without wasting any, and uh, fill up the metal pools, and then stop. Should work a treat. I know, because I tried it once before. <laughs> As always. All right, we've got automated the first two steps of Batania. Uh, three if you count the uh, slight manual automation. I didn't fully automate the living rock and living wood because I don't need that much. If I needed a ton, I'd automate that in a similar way. Uh, Integrator Dynamics can actually place blocks as well. It could place the raw materials and then pick up the results. But uh, for now, getting half a stack at a time with just a click or two, that works fine for me. Only automate what you have to. All right, this is Nonsanity. Signing out. We'll continue with Botania next time. Take care, be good, stay healthy, and see you next time.